Back in spring of 2023, a treasure trove of secret documents was released by a disgraced former National Guardsman who spilled the tea on many classified documents regarding the Ukraine conflict. But while the Ukraine conflict got all the limelight in the media, other highly classified documents unrelated to Ukraine were also released in the leak. Among these was a National Geospatial Agency report detailing that the US now believes China has its first operational supersonic spy drone. But what exactly is it? And what does its deployment mean for the US military and its allies? The media became fixated on reports that this was some brand new technology that the US knew nothing about. That part is actually not true. The Chinese military unveiled the aircraft in Tiananmen Square the first time back in 2019 during a military parade that celebrated the 70th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese Communist Party. Analyzing pictures from this time shows a few interesting features that make it a scary piece of equipment for the Chinese to have. The unmanned drone, dubbed the WZ-8, is approximately 67 feet long with a wingspan of just over 9 feet and stands at 10.5 feet tall. The basic construction of the craft is a swept back variety, meaning the leading edges of its wings sweep back into the body of its monoplane design. These features are necessary because the craft is believed to operate at extreme speeds and altitudes. Estimates vary, but the general consensus is that the craft has a surface ceiling of between 100,000 and 140,000 feet and can fly at speeds of around 3,330 miles per hour. To put this into perspective, the speed needed to reach hypersonic levels is just 500 miles per hour more, and the operating ceiling this craft can reach is estimated to be higher than that of both the SR-71 Blackbird and the highest manned flight ever recorded. But of course, this comparison should be taken with a grain of salt since they were manned aircraft. Even still, achieving such speeds and altitudes with an unmanned craft is impressive. But how can the Chinese attain such operating parameters? The short answer to this question is its rocket engines. It's an open secret that the Chinese have problems developing jet engines that can perform well at high altitudes and speeds. Rather than working to establish a domestic defense industry that's capable of developing and producing these advanced jet engines, China has been relegated to copying the outdated homework of other major military powers. Most of its domestically produced military aircraft engines are copies of US or Russian models, leading to the People's Liberation Army Air Force lagging behind other air forces in terms of the capabilities of their airframes. As a result, the Chinese opted not to use a jet engine for its high-tech drone. Instead, rockets are used to propel the craft to its claimed speeds of 3,330 miles per hour. Using rockets have a few benefits and drawbacks. The first benefit is that it allows the craft to achieve incredible speeds in a short amount of time. Building a rocket engine is also much more straightforward than a jet engine, placing less stress on China's underdeveloped research sector. But it also comes with a few drawbacks, including the fact that once you start a rocket engine, you can't stop it. That means that once the WZ-8 is launched, a rocket motor will quickly burn out, limiting the craft's flight time. The rocket engines also make it incredibly hard to control. In fact, how the Chinese have engineered the craft to control itself in flight above the heights where standard flight controls become ineffective remains a mystery. Examining photographic evidence from the Chinese military parade shows that the craft does not appear to have thrust vectoring capabilities. However, there is an opening on the nose of the craft that serves an unknown purpose. Eggheads in the military theorize that this could be where the internal navigation suite for the drone is housed. Some think it could also have housed some of the cameras and spy equipment on board when used for missions. But the fact remains that little is known about how the craft is controlled or how it moves during flight. But we do have a pretty good idea of how China will use it. The clue lies with the mounting brackets on top of the craft and China's recent upgrades to its bomber fleet. The H-6 bomber is the premier long-range bomber in the Chinese Air Force. Although it's based on the now ancient Soviet Tu-16 bomber, China has been upgrading its airframes to make them suitable for 21st century combat. One of these upgrades has given the H-6 the ability to fire the latest and greatest Chinese anti-ship missiles. But more recent versions of the class, the November variant, has some interesting characteristics never before seen in other variants. The bomber has had its bomb bay completely removed and replaced with a semi-recessed area. Inside this area are a series of hard points that correspond quite well with the hard points on the WZ-8 drone. It's theorized that the upgraded H-6Ns will act as a launch platform for the drone. Once deployed, the drone would quickly reach its cruise speed with an estimated flight time of around 20 minutes. 
During that 20 minutes, the drone could cover 1,100 miles before landing at an airstrip on one of the Chinese-controlled island chains. But what is it capable of doing in those short 20 minutes? As of the making of this video, US analysts believe that the drone is not equipped with any offensive weaponry. However, China may still try to arm it with missiles in the future. However, given that China's research and development capabilities are criminally underdeveloped, this is unlikely. Though it does not have weapons, the WZ-8 is believed to have a ton of cameras and sensors on board. The drone is also believed to use synthetic aperture cameras to see through thick clouds and raging storms to get accurate data no matter the weather conditions. However, can it pose a threat to US forces? The greatest fear about this drone is that China can use it as a third-party targeting platform for long-range missiles. Third-party targeting is a common modern-day military tactic where a firing unit such as a plane or a ship receives radar tracks from another firing unit, meaning a missile can be launched beyond the effective range of the receiver's sensors. However, passing on high-quality information is no easy task. Over the years, China has invested heavily in fixing the first part of this problem by building up a huge ballistic missile inventory. Today, China has the largest and most versatile ballistic missile arsenal in the world. This investment was made with the hope that the People's Liberation Army Rocket Force could use the missile stockpile to keep US ships as far away from the South China Sea as possible. However, because the Chinese Navy is much weaker than the US Navy, and with Chinese planes not guaranteed safety past the first island chain, China must overwhelmingly rely on shore-based radar installations to pass high-quality targeting data to Chinese units. Because of the limitations of shore-based radar, namely range and fidelity over long distances, the Chinese military has been searching for years for a solution to get accurate firing data to its firing units to ensure that it can not only fire a huge blanket of missiles, but they also hit their intended targets. The US intelligence services believes that the purpose of the WZ-8 is to eventually feed enough real-time targeting data to Chinese units that it'll increase the effective range of its missile arsenal. However, China's capacity to do this now and even in the future is limited. The kind of data the drone can collect and how quickly it can transmit it has yet to be revealed publicly. After all, data that is not high enough quality or severely time-delayed is not useful when firing missiles. Given how fast the craft can move and the altitude it reaches, it's more likely that the drone is more of a situation awareness tool than a third-party targeting platform, as much as the Chinese would hope otherwise. Because of the vast expanses of the Pacific, there are numerous ways US ships can move to attack Chinese outposts in the South China Sea. With China's limited ability to project power past the South China Sea, the WZ-8 is probably the Chinese military's best bet as an early warning system of where the US Navy is coming from. Even though the data it provides would not be good enough to guide a missile, it would provide the Chinese situational awareness to at least concentrate their forces and where to expect an attack from without having to worry about securing every naval route into the area. But how could the US Navy defend against the WZ-8? Unlike China, the US has the most capable air defense network in the world. Because the South China Sea is a maritime domain, the primary air defense network in this space would be provided by the US Navy's Aegis Missile Defense System. Aegis has been the US Navy's primary air defense system for decades, and it has been continually upgraded as emerging threats come around. There are different baselines of Aegis among the cruisers and destroyers equipped with it, broken down into two broad categories depending on whether the ship is ballistic missile defense capable. But broadly speaking, few commentators are worried about the US's ability to track and shoot down this threat because of how powerful the Aegis system is. This is because the US has the SM-3 and SM-6 missiles. The SM-3 missile is specifically designed to attack high-altitude, fast-moving threats. Though intended for ballistic missile interception, this could certainly take out a target like the WZ-8. Additionally, the US could also use the SM-6 missile, intended for advanced threats or targets of unknown capabilities. These missiles are the only known defense against hypersonic threats targeting the US Navy. With the WZ-8 reaching near hypersonic speeds, this is likely the missile that the US can use to shoot it down. So with all that being said, is the WZ-8 something for the US to worry about? Probably not, and here's why. The domestic Chinese drone industry is the leading exporter of both armed and unarmed combat drones to militaries across the world. But while these drones have proven themselves on the battlefield in places like Iraq and Yemen, they are cheap pieces of equipment for militaries fighting enemies with limited to no anti-air capabilities on a budget. 
By comparison, the US is the unequivocal leader in both drone and anti-air technology. Because US drones are so much more advanced than Chinese ones, China has been trying hard to close the gap. While the WZ-8 is a step in the right direction for China, it will likely do little to change the overall strategic picture. After all, with a limited flight time, data of unknown but probably dubious quality, and relying on another aircraft to launch it, the WZ-8 certainly has its weaknesses. When coupled with the fact that the US Navy dominates the maritime domain's anti-airspace, the WZ-8 in its current state presents few strategic level problems. However, if China continues to refine the drone to increase its stay time in the air, or new information comes out about the quality of its data, or that it can be utilized as a third-party targeting platform, the US military will need to ensure its forces are more adequately protected from this threat. Now watch why China's artificial islands are now sinking, or check out this video instead.